So we are back here at Osir260 and now uh, we're going to talk to Christian Schwarzberg from wardsautos.com about the best in, uh, interior awards, I'm sorry, for 2014. How are you, Christy? Hi, Javier. I'm well. How are you? Excellent. Thank you very much. So I can't believe it's gone a, a year already since we last talked about these awards. It's uh, incredible, really. I know. It comes up really quickly, but it's always a lot of fun for us. Yeah. So to our listeners, to explain a little bit the process uh, that you guys go at uh, to, to select the best interiors in the industry, you talk about, I believe, you test drove about, what, 40 cars or something like that? Yeah, this year we, test, we tested about 41 cars, um, and uh, they have to be either new or significantly, or have a significantly redesigned interior. So we don't want to, you know, test something that's been on the market for a while. Um, and, we, and we judge on a variety of parameters. We look at um, ergonomics, we look at materials, fit and finish, uh, driver information, safety, uh, comfort, design, and value. Yeah, in uh, the driver information uh, segment of it, I guess that's where you include all the new technology that there's a lot in a lot of new cars, right? Correct, yes. That's where, where the new technology goes, and uh, we, we look at that. We look at, you know, lane departure, lane keep assist. We um, also judge, though, just the basics, you know. How well does the car communicate um, fuel economy to the driver? Is it really hard? Is it difficult to pull up? Uh, the tire pressure monitor, or is it, you know, is it easy? Is it hidden deep in a menu, or is it easy to get to? Stuff like that. Yeah, actually, uh, I went to drive the new Cadillac Escalade, and it has the Q system, which is which is really nice in many aspects, but uh, my co-driver was complaining about not finding regular knobs for volume and stuff like that. So I guess there's pro and cons to new technology, yes, always. Yes, yes, there can be, yeah. So I know you organized the list in alphabetical order to be, I guess, fair with everybody else, but I took the liberty of uh, rearrange it by price because I think it's very interesting to see how even at a very low price, you can get a lot in a car. So um, I hope you don't mind that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean, you know, our list, we try to keep it uh, balanced. And certainly this year we run the gamut from the really affordable to the really expensive. Yeah. So the, in, in this uh, price range, the, the lowest price was the Kia Soul Plus, $24,010. And uh, what, what did you like in that car? Well, you know, this is the second generation of the Soul. We really like the first one, and we really like the second one. Um, the second one has much better interior materials, uh, much higher quality interior materials, and a lot of uh, really fun features, uh, all for a very affordable price, $24,000. Um, I, I personally really enjoyed the, um, the touch screen. It's, I think, eight inches, which is just huge for a, for a compact car. Um, I mean, a few years ago, you'd only get a touch screen that size in a luxury vehicle, so that's, that's quite a progression that's been made. And I think uh, the map, the, the resolution of the screen um, is really good. It's re excellent, and you can see that in the, uh, in the maps when you're in the navigation uh, section of the of the menu, the maps are crystal clear and, uh, you know, show you upcoming turns and upcoming exits and it's, uh, it has great driver information. Yeah, actually, I, I agree with you. I also like the Kia Soul a lot. It's unfortunately that some people still don't even know the right name because a friend of mine uh, said, uh, referred to the hamster car. <laughs> That's all she knows. Yes. <laughs> Yes, the, the hamsters have taken on a life of their own, I think. <laughs> so, uh, in the 30,000, let's say 30 to 40,000 range, you have the Mazda 3, the Volkswagen GTI, the Chrysler 200, and the Jeep Cherokee Limited. A lot of good choices, too. Especially, I think, in the 200. No, I, uh, but give me the rundown in your study, please. Uh, the Chrysler 200 is, is all new uh, for uh, the 15 model year, and this is Chrysler's uh, first stab at a mid-size sedan in a while. And they've done a really great job in, in bringing high style and, and quality materials to a relatively affordable segment. Um, the vehicle we tested was $31,470, which is actually below the average transaction price for a new car in the United States these days. Um, and they've got um, some really great features. They've got ambient lighting. There's contrast piping on leather seats. Um, there's uh, The ergonomics are great. Um, there's a sliding uh, cup holder 
uh, which is which is very clever. And there's a uh, one piece matte finish wood veneer, um, which really dresses up the interior. Yeah, I was uh, kidding with some of our colleagues saying that they should have changed the name to the twenty thousand because this car is like a hundred times better than the old generation. Yes, yes, oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so the Mazda 3, also a great car. I also like that a lot. Yeah, I mean, this is, again, you know, we're, we're seeing these really nice, uh, high-quality interior materials filter down into into lower price segments. And uh, the Mazda 3 uh, takes on sort of the elements that we enjoyed last year on the Mazda 6. Uh, it has the two-tone interior, um, has... Uh, lane departure warning, forward obstruction warning, radar adaptive cruise control, all these really high-end advanced uh, safety features. And they've got carbon fiber trim. You can choose from three shades of contrast stitching, red, white, or black. There's a heads-up display. I mean, it's just really, really jam-packed with the yeah. features. I'm sorry, I, I, I think you, you, you um, they're not doing that well in sales with this car, which is kind of surprising. I guess their engineering and design is really good. Their marketing might not be as good, I guess, huh? Yeah, um, I, I spoke to Jim O'Sullivan from Oz at the Chicago show, and at that point they were just uh, starting to get units from their new plant in Mexico. So I think they're expecting sales to pick up uh, later this year. Yeah. Uh, in that range also, the Volkswagen GTI, one of my favorite cars, and uh, yeah, a great model for 30695 as you tested it, right? Yes, and you know, Volkswagen is, is no stranger to our interiors competition, and, and certainly not a, uh, they're well known for having really great interiors in their vehicles. And uh, this is a seventh generation, uh, the GTI is part of the seventh generation Gulf family, and they've got, uh, you know, bright red stitching, um, they've got bolstered seats, uh, you can get the plaid seats, uh, the insets, the plaid fabric insets on the seats, which the GTI is famous for. Um, the touch screen is really user friendly. Uh, it's, it's just, again, you know, another compact car with a lot for the money. Yeah, and then uh, in the list, uh, the price uh, jumps from um, 37000 uh, in the case of the Jeep to 56000 for the GMC Sierra Denali. And they're the high uh, Hyundai Echos Ultimate. I mean, those are great cars in the, those two segments. But let's talk briefly about the GMC, please. Uh, the Sierra Denali, uh, as, as you know, it's uh, the GMs redesigned their trucks for uh, 20, 2015. And uh, this uh, Sierra Denali we tested about the same time we tested the Silverado. Um, I think it was the high country grade of the Silverado. And we, we came away liking the Sierra, Sierra Denali better. Um, we thought, you know, the build quality was excellent. Excellent. Um, it had, you know, a bit of an urban, urban design flair with a brush metallic trim. Uh, very user friendly. There were a lot of electrical sockets and USB plugs, uh, so you can, you know, charge your phone or iPad or whatever you have with you when you're in the car. Um, it was, it was also, uh, it's high end, but it had a lot of elements, you know, for people that are using the truck for work. Uh, there's storage cubbies, there's, you know, a big center console. Uh, you also get heated and cooled seats and a heated steering wheel, which yeah. is something we, we saw a lot of this year, heated steering wheel. Yeah, pretty amazing for a pickup truck. <laughs> then, yeah, uh, I mean, it's not your father's pickup truck. No, I know, I know. So the Hyundai Echos, I mean, not surprised there, I guess. They're doing a lot of uh, great things. And actually, we, you and me just uh, drove the, the new Genesis, which I think is going to be here the next year. But like the Echos for this year, Amazing interior, too. Right, right. I mean, Hyundai Kia has just stepped up their game enormously on interiors, and the Equus uh, grade we tested, which is the ultimate, that's the highest price Equus you can you can buy, and um, we were just really blown away. I mean, it has all the content of a six-figure, you know, German luxury car in a $70,000 package. Um, and then for Hyundai, you know, their hallmark now is incredible interior materials, just the, the best stuff they use. Yeah. Um, and, and this car had, you know, the, the it was a long wheelbase version, so you could recline the rear seats. Uh, it, it was just really over the top. Yeah, a few years ago, you probably wouldn't not uh, hear this or even dare to say it, but like, it actually, actually competes uh, fairly good with the Mercedes-Benz S-Class that is also on your list. Yes. 
Yes, yes. And then we definitely, you know, drew some parallels between the two. Although I think, uh, you know, both they're both very, uh, very good vehicles. I think the S Class uh, edged out the Equus, and or for me anyway, edged out the Equus in terms of the design aesthetic. Um, yeah. One thing I really loved about the S Class is how Mercedes took relatively common elements in an in interior and upgraded them, like the perforation of the seats. You know, you have to have the perforated seats or the perforated leather if you're going to have the um, air-conditioned seats, but instead of just using, you know, an everyday sort of pattern, they, they did something unique and, and sort of arranged the dots in a way that it, it gave it a design. And yeah. there's also, you know, unique perforation on the speaker panels and just yeah. really a lot of great attention to detail in that So, vehicle. Christy, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. We have less than a minute here. So the, the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray also, and no surprise, the Rolls Royce is right. I mean, amazing cars. So can you please tell our audience where we can find the, the full result of the study, please? Sure. Uh, go to wardsauto.com, click on the reports tab, and scroll down to 2014 Wards 10 Best Interiors. That'll take you to a page with uh, the winners, all sorts of videos, pictures, photo galleries, the whole works. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Christy Schwanzberg from uh, wardsauto.com for your time. And uh, again, I guess next year we'll talk about the genesis in this list, I, I hope. <laughs> Oh, it'll be a next year for sure. Thank you, Christy. Thanks, Javier. Bye. Ya regresamos aquí en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network para hablar justamente del Hyundai Genesis 2015 que fuimos a probar la semana pasada a Scottsdale en Arizona y que, como decíamos ahí en la entrevista con Christy, seguramente va a estar en la lista de los autos con el mejor interior para el 2015 y en otras listas de otros premios. Esto es Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota. programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.